Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. And it's always a, a special day when Shanita and Tuli come to our service. So there's, we have several announcements for today. Uh, today at 12 o'clock, there's a session meeting in uh, classroom two. Monday morning, no Zoom study, but it will start again next Monday. And they'll be studying, I think she told me, John Main. Tuesday at 10 o'clock, Joy Group. Also, the Grief Support Group will start again on February 7th. And that'll be 6.30 to 8 in Classroom 2. And I believe it goes for six weeks? 11, 11 sessions. Wednesday on the bulletin, on the calendar, it says that there's a 9 a.m. till noon craft day, and that has, will not happen. And Beth can give us a little update on maybe on uh, Wilma. how Wilma is doing. <coughs> okay. Choir rehearsal at 6.30 on Wednesday. Welcome back, Reverend Kathleen Brenniger. And the prayer vigil is planned to be on February 17th. Dawn has the sign-up sheet. So you need to stop with the visit with Dawn and get your names on the list for those that's going to do the prayer vigils. I think we can adjust our schedules to fit that. So are there any other announcements that we need to bring up? Where is that prayer vigil? It happens in the ALC. Yeah, the ALC. Thank you. Okay, so if you'll all join me in the in the call to worship. Stretch us, O God. Expand the horizons of our lives so that we are able to comprehend the mysterious and wonderful ways you are at work in the world. With radiant eyes, with rejoicing hearts, we worship God. I want to... Join us in prayer for confession. Forgive us for hiding in the darkness of this world more than loving the light of your righteousness made known to us in Jesus Christ. Judge us with mercy and extend your grace to us. Strengthen our faithfulness to you and to all who are precious in your sight. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. In the Declaration of Forgiveness, God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but the world might be saved through him. We declare the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free to live a new life in them, in him. So it's time for the anthem, and Steve is going to lead them today.
Let us pray. God of light, we have heard your message proclaimed of old, that in you there is no dark cloud at all. Nothing exists that can hide the light of your presence. Forgive us when we cling to the shadows, failing to heed your call to wake up and join the work of your reign. Send us to do your deeds of mercy and peace, to feed the hungry, Shelter the homeless. Touch the sick with your healing balm. Console the sorrowing. Visit the prisoners. Welcome the stranger. Guide us in this time of shadows. Keep us from despair when we see that there is no peace in our cities and no security in our places of higher learning. Lift our eyes toward you that we may see your face shining on us and walk in your light. Comfort with your presence those who are living in the shadow of grief, shattered by the loss of children, parents, spouses, friends, and colleagues. Give assurance to all who are missing loved ones that the living and the dead are in your care, certain of being joined again in the unbroken circle that will sing your praise forever. And now will you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is this heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll have a prayer for illumination. Dear Heavenly Father, before reading from the Bible, we seek the illumination of the Holy Spirit and call upon you to make us receptive to the life-giving word that comes up to us through both the reading and the proclamation of Scripture. 
what you say to us today. Amen. Lynn Legrander is going to read the scripture for us. Thank you, Lynn. Good morning. morning. All our scripture readings today are from the Old Testament. So the first one is Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The second reading is also from Psalm. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle will, will he hide me, He will set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies around me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. The last reading is from Isaiah. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. When at first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously affect her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation and increased the joy. The joy before thee, according to the joy in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we are in the season of Epiphany, a period beginning on January 6th with the visit of the Magi to see and to honor baby Jesus, and ending the day before Ash Wednesday. It provides us with a period of time to celebrate the birth of Jesus and to contemplate what that means in our lives. What do we do with ourselves in this period of epiphany? Perhaps we look for ways to bring joy to others. Maybe we work to better the world in our own town or in some way. We may decide to do some reading 
either for pleasure, which I enjoy, or to find out more about our world. It does not seem to be a time of desolation and destruction, of things to fear, but it is a time to catch our breath after the season of Christmas and now into Epiphany. The reading from Psalms this morning seems to encourage us not to fear. Admittedly, verses 2 and 3 of the psalm are removed from this reading for today. They might have been about fear, and so they were taken out for the reading today. The author rejoices in the Lord, explaining that he believes he can trust God, who will hide him from times of trouble. Therefore, the psalmist rejoices in God, seeking God's presence and seeking God's face. The psalmist and we are in a period of waiting, a time of promise and hope. The readings from the Bible for this Sunday emphasize light as being able to destruct the chaos in our lives. The light which we can see in Jesus brings the destruction of chaos and a restoration of the cosmic order and a liberation from forces of oppression. Reliance on God through Jesus Christ, our Savior, brings more calm than we might otherwise experience. Psalm 27 is a triumphant song of confidence, which is fitting for us in the season of Epiphany. The words used, light, salvation, stronghold, as well as hides, protect the psalmist and us when we read or hear these words. The psalm has been described as a bold song of joy and thanksgiving. Too many people see the Old Testament as full of angry, vengeful words, which must mean that God is angry and vengeful. Perhaps the Old Testament, in its teaching of history, is meant to show us what was, what could be, and what still can be. In Psalm 27, we find assurance that whatever we face, God is good to save and protect us. In the New Testament, we can see Christ's arrival as a welcome counter-narrative. The world is not all chaos and gloom. God exists in it and with us. Our worst scenario would be to be alienated from God. Psalm 27 is a psalm of praise, a bold statement of faith. Verse 5 is particularly an expression of hope. We have a home in God who will protect us and set us on a rock, a safe place. If we exhibit only fear, which is the enemy of faith, What are we saying about our faith? Is it only hopeful in good times? We know for a certainty that not all of us live lives that are free from fear. But we do have God. And knowing God through the Bible and through our lives makes a difference in how we live our lives. Does fear have the upper hand or does God? Yet anxiety still does persist. There are uncertainties of what tomorrow will bring. In the face of persecution, in the face of anxiety, God is with us. The psalmist offers a song of praise, a bold statement of faith. God can be trusted. I will sing to the Lord. The psalmist seeks God's own face. If we feel excluded from God, we have the stories of those who have found God in their lives and who express their reactions and feelings about this discovery in the Bible and in our lives. If we ponder upon our lives, I believe we find times when we realize that we were or are 
not alone. God was and is with us in the light and love of the Almighty all of the time. We may realize that God loves us, cares for us, and protects us. Yet there are times when we feel alone, or we wonder how long it will be before we truly are with God. Jack Aquaros, a person who loves God, wonders how long it will be before that happens. He has said, Lord, hurry up and give me patience. (laughs) Waiting is difficult for many of us. Luckily, we can experience God now in our lives, our actions, and in the actions of others. There are times in our lives when we may feel alone or we are confused by things that happen to us. I was in a terrible automobile accident that killed the driver of the car. I was injured and sent to the hospital for quite a while. At first, I didn't know where I was or what was happening, and then one day, I sort of woke up. The first words I remembered saying were, now I'm not afraid to die. I knew that God was there. Another Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah wants Israel to not be afraid. A new ruler will rise up and take them out of the darkness that they feel they are in. They will celebrate with joy the new king. Isaiah does not want to speak carelessly, but with authority. And he feels that his message to the people is important and right. He says that their lives will be shaped by justice, righteousness, and a never-ending peace. His thoughts may not have come totally to fruition, but his message is important to the people of that time and to us. Don't give up. God brings light and love always. Sometimes we just can't see it. As Christians, we know that we belong to God, we love God, and God loves us. Admittedly, there are times when we may forget. In the face of something which feels like crisis, that we love God and are loved and cared for by God. I've experienced times when I realized how much God loves us, and I can't help loving God and actually feel like singing, which is a blessing to no one. (laughs) I don't remember the name of the song, but there is a song that says, I cannot keep from singing. That's how I feel at those times. And it goes like this. My life goes on in endless song above earth's lamentations. I hear the real, though far off hymn, that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear its music ringing. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? While though the tempest loudly roars, I hear the truth, it liveth. And though the darkness round me close, songs in the night, it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? And there are times, and just recently I've had some of them, where that just keeps coming back to me. Maybe it's not quite as nice a time as I'd like, and still I think and say, how can I keep from singing? God is love. God is light. We love God. We can approach God with our fear and our problems and our love. Our problems may not instantly go away. Other problems might also come to being in our minds. Yet we know God. And we know that God loves us. Amen.
Will you join me in the affirmation of faith? Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something himself. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, all that also highly exalted him. At the time of Jesus, every knee should bend and every tongue should sing the glory of God. So now, as we leave this place, remember to take with you in your heart the love that God and Jesus have for us. And know that there are dark times, yes. But we are not walking those times alone. We have someone with us. And we can be also that someone for others as they struggle. So blessings on you as you go out from this place. And remember who and whose you are. Amen. Amen.